I'll be sharing with you some experiences from the field where I did research work. It's one of my favorite projects, which I carried out while I was working with the NGO Doctors for You in the Govindi Mankhud area, where we have a lot of resettlement colonies and slums. People in these colonies were allotted tenements by the government in these resettlement colonies because they were displaced from other parts of Mumbai. There is a high burden of tuberculosis in these buildings, and we will see why and how. A few years ago, uh, we have been trying some methods to try and prevent and control the disease in the colonies. And a few years ago, our health service provider found some interesting results. She observed that there is a specific pattern from where the maximum number of TB patients came. So tuberculosis, that is the disease I'm talking about. And uh, she, she observed that some, there were some specific buildings from, the, from where most of the TB patients came. When we mapped it, we were shocked to see the results. So if you see the pattern here, we see that there were some buildings which were sandwiched between other buildings and that's where from which the maximum number of TB patients came. And this was a trigger for our research project. So I would like to tell a few facts about TB here. India accounts for 27% of all the TB cases in the world. Mumbai is the capital of drug-resistant tuberculosis in India. Another interesting fact about TB is that the bacterium that causes it thrives in a damp area, spreads through coughing and sneezing, and is killed by direct sunlight. So we hypothesized that possibly there is a severe lack of ventilation and sunlight in these buildings, and that's why the bacteria are growing happily there and spreading more disease. We went on to investigate it further and launched a full research project to find more evidence. We conducted surveys across three resettlement colonies in more than 4,000 households to find if they had a TB patient in the last 10 years. We measured the areas of the windows and the doors through which the fresh air was supposed to come. We measured the distances between two buildings to see whether they were getting enough sunlight or not. We collaborated with experts from IIT Bombay and urban planners from across Mumbai. Together, we studied the building plans of these colonies and built computational models to find the patterns of airflow and sunlight access in each of the houses. We studied the interiors of these households as well. The results were compelling. We found that the two of the colonies which had high burden of TB, that is, Lalubhai compound in Mankhurd area and Natwarparik compound in Govandi, which had high burden of TB, also had a very poor building plan. So you see here, there is, on the left side, there is very small distance between the two buildings. It's just three meters. Whereas even within the buildings, there is small distance between the two walls and the corridor is dark even when there is bright sunshine outside. So we, we measured these distances and made models based on them. And our models showed that indeed, the buildings which were sandwiched between the other buildings had severe lack of ventilation and access to sunlight. The buildings and the households, households on the lowest floors had the least access to sunlight and the upper ones were still better off. Through our surveys, which we carried out throughout the households, we found out that there was much higher chance of finding a TB patient on the lower floors as compared to the upper floors. There is three to five times higher burden of tuberculosis in these colonies as compared to the national average. Another interesting result was more than 80% of the TB patient caught this disease 
after shifting into this colony, which means that the source of infection lied within the colony. There were a few more interesting results. We found that having a fully openable window is much better than having a sliding window because having a fully openable window allows 100% area for ventilation, whereas having a sliding shutter has only 50 to 70% area for ventilation. And both these colonies had only sliding windows. To add to the misery, they have a dumping ground and a medical incinerator facility nearby, which contributes to the air pollution and weakens their lungs even more. Most importantly, we found that the number of tenements per hectare in all these buildings is much higher than for the rest of the Mumbai. Which means that there are too many people staying in too little a space, allowing easy spread of the disease. And they were made in such a way because Nothing of it was illegal. We do not follow the same standards for the general market housing for the rest of Mumbai. But we did this for the displaced people to make the resettlement colonies, which proved very detrimental to their health. And who are these people who are staying in these buildings and colonies? They are poor, malnourished, and marginalized people who had come to Mumbai for a better employment and a better life because there is no hope in their native villages. They have been struggling to exist because there is no option of irrigation in their farms and none of the allied businesses are working. Many of them were landless laborers who struggle to feed their family. We need to build sustainable cities for us. It has been projected that by the year 2050, half of all the Indians will be staying in urban areas. We need to be careful not to follow this model of urbanization. Most importantly, we need to be careful about the kind of housing these people need for improving the social and economic conditions. We need to become sensitive to build in health, hygiene, sanitation and safety in our models of urbanization so that we do not repeat the mistakes of industrial revolution era. So how do we do it? We all know the fancy terms public-private partnership, community participation, stakeholder engagement, intersectoral coordination, systems thinking approach, etc., etc. We know the problems. We know the solutions too. The question is, are we willing to do it yet? Are we willing? Thank you.